So, mosquitoes. <laughs> I get asked quite a bit, why do you study mosquitoes? Plot twist, I don't. I study viruses that are transmitted by mosquitoes that we call arboviruses. When I was a grad student looking for something to do with my life and I first encountered the word arbovirus, I got super excited because I've thought of arboretum and arbor day and I was like, ooh, I'm just gonna hang out in trees all day. Well, turns out my South Louisiana accent was getting in the way and I was just pronouncing it wrong. The word arbo, not arbor, virus comes from arthropod-borne viruses. Mosquitoes are arthropods. So are flies and ticks and fleas, and incidentally, shrimp and crawfish, but I have this rule that I don't research stuff that I eat on a regular basis. <laughs> so, I don't research mosquitoes per se, I don't eat them either, but I do use mosquitoes as tools to ask questions about how and when these arboviruses are going to um, spread. And so that means that I do, in my lab, breed more mosquitoes because clearly that's what we need here is more mosquitoes. So I study several arboviruses, but the big ones are West Nile, dengue, chikungunya, and Zika. And these can all infect people, including chikungunya, which doesn't have anything to do with chickens. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is that if you want to maximize your health concerning these arboviruses, you need an environmentalist approach. And am I talking about saving the Amazon rainforest or cleaning up the oceans? No, though I think we should probably get on that. But what I'm talking about is your environments, your yards, your neighborhoods, your communities, and your cities, because your environments impact your health. Mosquitoes are part of the puzzle of arbovirus transmission. And of course, the other parts of the puzzle are the virus and people who, the, who are the hosts. And still on top of that, another piece of the puzzle is the environment. Transmission is the movement of virus from an individual to another individual. So it requires contact, right? So every parent ever has cringed when we get the email about the stomach bug going around in the classroom because we know now that the chance of our kid coming home with the stomach bug is really good. And if we're being honest, we're really mad because the chance of us getting the stomach bug is now astronomical because kids, while a blessing, touch everything. So transmission is what I study. It's my thing. And when you're talking about mosquito-borne uh, viruses, instead of talking about transmission being person to person, you now have person to mosquito to person. And on top of that, the environment is going to affect how many mosquitoes are out to bite, whether or not they feel like biting, how many other people are outside maybe to get bit instead of you, and how the virus acts in the mosquito to get back out. So this is my puzzle. And I know what you're all thinking. The best way to ensure less contact between people, mosquitoes, and viruses is to kill all the mosquitoes. Fair enough. But, quick side tangent. Mosquitoes are not useless. First of all, they're part of the food web. They feed other things like other insects, fish, bats, birds, lizards, frogs, and then other things will eat those other insects and the bird, birds and the bats and the lizards and the frogs. And we don't really want to mess with the food web. And second, they pollinate. So fun fact, only the ladies bite you, and they're not biting you because they're hungry. They are using the protein in your blood to make eggs that will eventually become more mosquitoes. So when they are hungry and they're looking for a food source, they're nectar feeders. And all the boys are nectar feeders all of the time. And so they pollinate. And in a world where major pollinators like bees are in trouble, I would argue that we need mosquitoes. 
And finally, last but certainly not least, I have two kids to put through school and I enjoy the job security. So <laughs> I will preach unto anyone that mosquitoes are not useless. <laughs> but let's say, shockingly, that I haven't convinced you and you still want to kill all the mosquitoes. Okay. Well, mosquitoes evolved into what they are today, millions of years ago. And over those millions of years, they've had to adapt to a lot of stuff. And that means that mosquitoes are real good at being mosquitoes. We have some of the best mosquito control organizations here in Baton Rouge and across Louisiana in the country. And they play a pivotal role in controlling mosquito populations and protecting our public health. But they're not going to kill all the mosquitoes. Well, why not? One, there's just too many of them. I don't think anybody here is going to argue with me that we have a shortage of mosquitoes here, <laughs> right? And two, it's a balancing act. So if you remember I said mosquitoes are, have adapted to a lot of stuff, well, if we spray too much or too little or too long or too something, mosquitoes have the ability to develop resistance to pesticides. And suddenly our bug sprays may not work as well. So we really can't kill all the mosquitoes in the foreseeable future. So what do we need to do? We need our environmentalist support, approach because we need to do our part to decrease contact. And here's a couple of examples of how you can do that. First, don't litter. Ask other people not to litter nicely. Dump out standing water in and around where you hang out. All mosquitoes have an aquatic life cycle, and the females lay their eggs by um, water. The eggs hatch into the water, and the larvae develop and feed in water until they become adults and they fly, fly away. The mosquitoes that transmit dengue, chikungunya, Zika, and sometimes West Nile are Aedes aegypti, that's that one, or Aedes albopictus, which is the one in the backyard with the striped legs uh, biting you at night. These mosquitoes love to breed in things like old tires, flower pots, and random trash. Something as small as the cap to a bottle of water can produce dozens of adult mosquitoes. Next, stop cutting down all the trees. Trees are cool. Everybody loves trees. But also, trees cool, verb. Specifically, trees and other vegetation cool our local environments. Why is this important? Well, to get to that, let me explain quickly how a virus gets in and out of a mosquito. A mosquito bites an infected person and gets the virus in her stomach, which we call the midgut. The virus has to get out of the midgut and into the mosquito equivalent of the circulatory system. From there, it infects other tissues until eventually it gets to the salivary glands, and it basically turns those into little virus-producing factories. The next time the mosquito goes to bite somebody new, the virus gets spit out, and voila, transmission. This whole process can take anywhere from five days to two weeks, give or take. And not every mosquito that gets infected will eventually be able to transmit. The timing and success of a virus getting back out of a mosquito depends on which mosquito, which virus, and, care to guess, the environment. Lower temperatures, in general, slow this process down and make it less likely that the virus is going to get back out of that mosquito in the relatively short lifespan of an adult mosquito, which is anywhere from two to three weeks, give or take. If you've ever left Baton Rouge, the middle of Baton Rouge, and gone out to more suburban or rural areas, you notice the temperature drops. And we have all of us played find the shady parking spot in August, or really, what, April? So that's because we know that in the shade, it's cooler. These are small examples of a larger phenomenon known as urban heat islands, where major metropolitan areas and very developed urban centers can be as much as five degrees Celsius hotter than surrounding suburban or rural areas who tend to have more green spaces. This is significant because in my lab, we have shown a temperature difference as of two degrees can change the time it takes the virus to get through the mosquito from 20 days at a cooler temperature to 12 days at a warmer temperature. 
So that means that small change in temperature now results in eight extra days for that mosquito to bite you and give you something that you don't want, like Zika. So, our environmentalist approach. We need to do our part. What does that mean? Well, we're not going to litter, right? We're going to plant the trees. We're going to promote the green spaces, but we need to curate them and make sure that they are healthy spaces because it will all add up. And block by block, our environments will be healthier and we will be healthier. Because unless we are good stewards of our planet, it will bite back. Thank you. <laughs>